welcome. Thank you for joining us. Working out the kinks here. First time ever. It's an experiment. And uh, we're going live from my office here Wednesday night. I'm glad that you've tuned in. Stay with us. I'm excited for what we're going to get into tonight together. We're going to get down and do some praying together. I hope tonight will encourage you. I've got some thoughts to share with you here on the front end. And then I've got some questions that I want to give you that I think you'll enjoy talking through as a family and even as a city group, whether that's later tonight or tomorrow when you get a chance to connect online. So thanks again for tuning in. So glad you're here. I hope you're looking forward to this time and that you're preparing your mind and your heart to stop and pray. Uh, we're we're going to have an opportunity to, to do that. I want to share just a few thoughts with you, though, here at the, at the beginning as we jump in. Just some encouragement for you, some things I've been thinking about even throughout the day. And the first thing is this, and it's funny as I'm talking to the uh, camera here, and uh, I do have my computer set up here, and I will be checking in on some of your comments live. So if you say hi to me or uh, greet one another, let you know you're here, I'll, I'll interact here some a little bit with the comments live. I see, uh, I see Chris Newberger on there. Yay for sound, Jeffrey Eifert. We got that, buddy. Daniel Levitt, I know. Thanks for hanging in there with us, everybody. We're getting the, this all set up. So uh, seeing everybody chiming in here on Facebook, and I can even click over to our uh, website platform. And uh, the Kellys, say hi, they're on there. Hey, guys, love the Kellys. All of you jumping in there. We're getting the sound fixed. Looks like you've got it up there, too. Some thumbs up. I see Bob and Bev on there and, uh, and others. So thank you for tuning in, you guys. Great to have you. So some encouragements here on the front end, just as we get going, um, a couple things I've been thinking about. Number one is simply this. I want all of us, myself included, to keep feeling the abnormality of disconnection. Keep feeling the abnormality of, of what's happening right now. And so it's interesting because I think there's a balance and a tension on one hand. The further we move into this thing together, the, the more this is prolonged, our timeline's been bumped out, you know, we're, we're, there's a sense in which we kind of need to settle in, in, in a way to this, what's happening. Settle in in a healthy way, settle in in a positive way, our, our attitude, our perspective, our mindset, you know, our, our, our head and our heart, our routines, we, we need to settle in. So whatever you need to do to take care of yourself, your energy level, physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, we, we've got to do that. We've got to get in a good rhythm and routine together. And on the other hand, I want us to settle in without settling in, okay? Because, because this is abnormal, and it should be. And I, for one, don't want to pick up bad habits during this time. I don't want you to pick up bad habits during this time. I mean, I, I want to let this season where we're connecting this way during technology, look, I'm thankful for technology. I'm thankful that we can redeem and receive and use this to, to kind of have a way of connection. But this really is like propping up. It's propping up what, what, what is the real thing, right? This is not, this is a poor meal substitute, if you will, for the real meal of real in-person physical community. And so, so keep feeling the abnormality of this. Let this time and this season that we're in allow your, your uh, anticipation of coming back together, allow that to grow. When we come out of this thing, I, for one, I, I'm going to be ready to bounce back, snap back. I don't want to take for granted the gathering together with my brothers and sisters. Again, thankful for this online. Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. This is great. It's a kind of a fun way, but, but it's not what we were created for. And so keep feeling the abnormality of disconnection. So we got to find a way to settle in without settling in. Because this, this, this is going to come to an end at some point. We are going to move forward, whatever that looks like. We're going to get beyond the other side of this, and we're going to get back together. And I'm looking forward to that day, and I hope you are too. The second thing I want to encourage us with on the front end here is, is simply this. There's always an invitation in isolation. There's always an invitation in isolation. You know, it makes me think about Pastor Josh's point on his Sunday sermon, how what we know in the face of uncertainty. If you haven't listened to that sermon from Sunday, I, I would hope and encourage you to go back and listen to that. But God does His best work when it seems like it's the worst moments, right? There's that idea that God does His best work. And it's, it's true as well in the lives of the servants of God in times of isolation. For example, David, in the Psalms, many of those Psalms were written while David was in a cave. 
running for his life, running from Saul, and he's meeting with God, and God's doing form- formative work in his heart, in his life. And so, as one mentor of mine has said, as we were reflect- as reflecting on aspects of my own life journey, your life journey, when we come into a period of isolation, recognize that it's temporary. It's not to be the regular way of things, but God does some of His best work in caves. We see Elijah in, in Kings on the run from Jezebel, hiding out in a cave. He's isolated, he's fearful, he's anxious, and the Lord appears to Elijah. Not in the earthquake, not in the whirlwind, not in the fire, but in the still small voice, in the whisper. Right? God does some of his best work in caves. I was thinking of Joshua as the Lord was preparing him to lead the people of Israel when he was the young aide to Moses. And Moses would go into the tent of meeting and meet with the Lord and, and get instruction and direction for leading the people of God. And then Moses would leave the tent of meeting, but not Joshua. Joshua would hang out. He would linger in the tent alone with the Lord. He would linger. And really a place of isolation became a place of solitude. So I'm praying that for you and I, we will respond to the invitation that the Lord has for each of us in this time of isolation. So the first thing, keep feeling the abnormality of disconnection. Settle in without settling in. Yeah, this is temporary. But during this time, so don't, don't fall into bad habits, right? But during this time, conversely, seek the Lord. There's an invitation in the isolation. In fact, maybe for some of us, God might reveal Himself to us in a new way, in a fresh way. If you're a young person watching this, uh, you, you, you know, God might have you out of school. This may never, Lord willing, never happen again in your time growing up in school. Once in a lifetime experience. And you might have an opportunity to spend some time with the Lord and with your family in a way that could change your life forever. God could speak to you in this time and do some formative work in your heart and your life, young or old, wherever you're at. Let's receive the invitation from the Lord that is in this time of isolation. And and there's some good things to pursue and come out of this. And the third thought I have for us, and then we'll dive in and do some praying, is there are still, in the midst of everything going on, there are still the regular pains and trials of life happening. You know, I I had a a nephew, um, two and a half years old, who was playing with dad, who's home because of the, the, the coronavirus and off work and slid down his back and broke his femur. Uh, just last week. Uh, We have another gal in one of our city groups who broke her ankle, is home trying to take care of horses and and, and broke her ankle. We had a sweet gal in our church two days ago who had a stroke. She's doing doing okay. She's, I think, got to go home today. I was able to talk with her at the hospital and pray with her on the phone with her and her son, a good friend of mine, and and, uh, but unrelated altogether to coronavirus. Uh, High school basketball coach of mine, his father passed away of natural causes of old age and this time. So it's like, like regular trials are going on. I want us to remember that as well. There are all kinds of opportunities around us for us to, to encourage one another and to pray for people who are, are going through it, whether it's related to this season of coronavirus or whether it's just the, quote, regular kind of trials and pains of life. Those are still going on as well. Well, let's, let's transition to a time of prayer and get in. So I hope that encourages you. Those are just some thoughts that I've had, but let's jump in. And I want to remind us as we move to a time of prayer, in prayer, we process our thoughts and our emotions. And so that it is a healthy, God-given gift, tool, outlet to, to do that. And so take advantage of this time now that we're hopefully preparing our mind, our heart, in our, where you are there in your home, where you're watching this from, to get ready to stop and pray. Secondly, in prayer, we realign and recalibrate our heart. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. My soul will boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt His name together. I sought the Lord and He answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to Him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear Him, and He delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in Him.
in Him. So our first, our first prayer huddle moment here, time of focus together, I'm calling upward. And so what I want us to do is begin right where you are and let's reflect upon God's character and attributes. Let's think about His work and His actions, past, present, and future. And let's just take a few moments and glorify the Lord with me. Let's lift up His name. Let's, let's remind ourselves, realign, recalibrate your mind, your heart with who God is. Let's go upward with prayers of praise and thanksgiving. Take a few moments right now, and you're going to do that with your family, with, with uh, whoever you're at there. And you can put those prayers even of God's attributes on the comments here on Facebook or on the website there. Let's bless one another as well as we join into this time of prayer now, even with our comments online, and pray with those that you're with at your home. Let's do that now. So, Father, I just thank you for your incredible love, grace, and mercy. Thank you for the opportunity that we have to fix our eyes on you, to look up, to turn our hearts and our minds upward to you and lift you up and to glorify you, Jesus. Thank you for who you are and for all that you've done in our lives. I'm so grateful for every one of you watching this and the grace that God has poured out upon your life and our lives. His grace is amazing. And that's where we want to begin in prayer, that upward focus. Well, our second focus we want to move to is what I'm calling inward. And that's where we want to ask the Lord to realign and recalibrate our minds and our hearts. And if, if you've had a hard day, if you're experiencing frustration, if you're experiencing anxiety, uh, if you need a little tune-up in your perspective or in your attitude, when we come to the Lord in prayer, we want to start by, by looking up to Him. And then we want to look inward and say, God, start in me. Take responsibility for my condition before the Lord. Lord, prepare me, use me, do the work in me, Lord, first. And then we're going to move to a time of outward prayer. But let's take a moment right now where you are and pray for ourselves. Pray for one another. Pray for those that you're with right there. Pray for that right perspective and attitude that the Lord wants us to have. That's how Jesus is going to be honored through this time, is praying for the perspective and attitude and the realignment that needs to take place. If you need to confess sin, if you need to repent from stuff today or an attitude, this is the time that you can do that. And let's also just pray that the Lord would, would allow us to spiritually grow during this season that we're in. So let's go to that time of prayer now with those that you're with and keep putting those prayers on the comments as well. Let's do that now.
Amen. I, I hope that the Lord is working in your heart and your mind and that you desire to grow and to engage with Him for Him to do His work in your heart in these days. Let it begin in me, God. Let it begin in us. I hope that's your heart. And now let's, let's move to our third prayer focus together. And this now, now we've, we've gone up, we've acknowledged the Lord, who He is and what He's done. And we got begin to get our view fixed on Him. And we've turned in and looked in and said, Lord, create in me a clean heart. God, do your work in me. And now we're, we're hopefully prepared and we're tuned, we're aligned, we're moving that way to now begin to focus our prayers to be a blessing to others, to move outward in our prayer. And so as we move into this time of outward prayer, I want you to be thinking about specific people that you know who are in need. Again, it may be related to the challenge of this whole coronavirus, coronavirus situation, or it may be, again, the regular stuff of life that's going on. I mentioned people just that I know in my little circle of friends and family that are going through trials that are totally unrelated, that would be happening with or without this coronavirus situation. So who do you know personally that's in need of prayer? Who do you know that's going through something? And you'll have an opportunity to bring those names together as a family with who you're with there or online on our comments to the Lord in prayer. And then also let's pray for the Wenatchee Valley and North Central Washington and beyond. I'm assuming most of us watching here is Grace City Church folks or Wenatchee Valley folks, but wherever you're tuning in from, if you're watching from elsewhere, man, pray for your hometown. Pray for your city, your region. And I want to remind us of those categories of people that we're praying for. Uh, we're praying for leaders. We're praying for the frontline workers. We're praying for the, those who are physically sick or vulnerable. We're praying for those who are economically hurting, struggling, or vulnerable. We're praying for the church in these days, all across the, the region, all across the world. And we're praying for those who need to come home to God. And I know there's some other categories of people that are on your heart, your mind. I've heard people say, you know, there's, there, what about people who are, are single and maybe alone and, and, and they're struggling right now? Hey, let's, let's pray for them. Let's pray for those delivery workers who are still out and about delivering packages that people are ordering. I mean, there's other categories that you may think of. And let's bring them to the Lord. Let's spend a few minutes together. You know, take advantage of these moments right now. Lift up the people that you know that are in need. Lift up those frontline workers, those leaders. Lift up those people that are on your heart. The Lord will bring them to mind. And let's pray outward prayers, interceding, standing in the gap for the people who need to feel and receive the uplifting encouragement of those prayers. The Lord hears, the Lord answers. Let's pray for them now. Let's go to a time of outward focused praying. Let's do that now.
Amen. Amen. You know, one of the things that I hope you'll continue, maybe even after this, when we're, we're wrapped up with our time here, maybe you want to extend this prayer time together. And I'm just trying to give you some handles and categories that you can keep praying. So if you've got others, if you feel like that time got cut short, you're like, man, I've got more coming to mind, then, then awesome. That's the invitation from the Lord for you to keep going in prayer. And I hope that this will spur you on to keep doing that. Uh, one of the things that a uh, focus point for us when we think of outward prayers and thinking of our, our own valley and our hometown here, specifically I want to I wanna mention something for you small business owners. Those of you who are facing all of the questions and challenges with this shutdown and all of this going on, if you're a small business owner and you're watching this, we have a special opportunity for you. I want you to take advantage of this and jump on it fast. It's coming up tomorrow with Pastor Josh and Pastor Kyle. It's a Zoom call that we are offering to you so that you can understand more about the Paycheck Protection Program that's going on with the CARES Act. Our own Pastor Kyle Strong is our resident expert on these things. He's just done a tremendous job getting his CPA mind, executive pastor mind in and around all of the, the dynamics related to that. And so please take advantage. I think we've got some information coming up on the screen right now. Please email us. You can do that tonight. Email us at hello at gracecitychurch.com. The information is there. Join Pastor Josh and Pastor Kyle for a Zoom call tomorrow at 4 p.m. That's tomorrow, April 2nd. And email us at that address there, and you'll get the information about how to join in on that call. So please take advantage of that. We really want to come alongside you business owners in our church family, those that you know, encourage them to jump on with that. So you small business owners, take advantage of that. And, uh, and, and we're grateful for you, and we're praying for you. And we want to come alongside and help any way that we can. Pastor Kyle and Pastor Josh, look forward to seeing you on that call tomorrow. And now let's, let's, let's go to our final prayer time. Um, we're going to come back to where we started, and that's upward again. And uh, we're going we're gonna to give you another moment of time of prayer here, and then, and then I'll give you the questions for you, and that'll wrap up our time here in just a moment. So um, we're going to come back to a focus on praise and thanksgiving. And at the end of the day, I, I wanted to share one more passage of Scripture, and, and I was thinking of the story of Job and the incredible loss and suffering he faced. And I'm not comparing what we're experiencing now to what he went through there, but it's instructive for us to understand. I love it when Job says, The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. May the name of the Lord be praised. At the end of the day, through it all, come what may, whatever we're facing, I hope it's your heart and your desire that Jesus would be glorified, that the name of Jesus, that the name of the Lord would be exalted and lifted up. And so we're going to pray, Lord, get your glory from our lives, from our church family, in this situation. Lord, get your glory, receive your praise. You are good. You are good all the time. May the name of the Lord be praised. The Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's, let's return again to the upward focus, prayers of praise and thanksgiving, and just glorify the Lord together and ask that His name would be honored in these days. Let's do that now.
Amen. Amen. Well, uh, I'm checking out some of the comments here, looking at the uh, Facebook. Those of you on Facebook, I want to give a couple of shout outs here. Carrie Redden, uh, you tell Lainey. Lainey, if you're watching this right now, still tuned in, thank you for your comment. I'm happy to be talking about Jesus right now during this. Good job typing that out. I love that. So way to go, Lainey and Carrie. We love you. We're praying for you. So thankful for you. Of course, I see Colton loving your prayers on there, buddy. Good job. Chris doing your thing. Appreciate that. I see all you. Terry, thanks for your comments, your prayers. Single mom, good job. You say you're doing good. I love seeing that. We'll keep praying for you. Glad that you're on there. Uh, and my mother-in-law, Karen Rose, thank you for being so active on here tonight. Love seeing you on there. Um, who else? I'll jump over real quick onto the website for those of you uh, that are tuning in through our web platform. I see Pastor Chris being helpful on there, giving you information you need. The Hoylands are on there. Thanks, Hoylands, for joining in. Good to have you. Uh, Doug, I hope you get it figured out, buddy. I, 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 the starting and stopping. I know it can be frustrating. We're trying to harness this technology there. Um, who else? Anybody else want to chime in? Oh, Pastor Kerry Max on there. Kerry, thanks for tuning in there as well, helping out. All the crew, the Smiths are there. Smiths, hello, Cashmere and company. Good to have all you guys. Justin Kissel, buddy, love you guys. Great to have you tuning in. Good, I'm seeing some, some good interaction there. Great to have you guys joined in. Here, let's see. Uh, all right, thank you so much. Well, let me let me um, before we before we uh, head out here. Last thing I want to give you is five questions to use. Questions are great tools to help generate some good dialogue and discussion together with the family, with your city group. So here are five questions. I want to read these, and then they're going to come up on your screen, and you'll be able to take a screenshot if you're watching on your phone, or snap a picture of it if you got your phone. We're going to leave the questions up there on the screen for an extra few minutes so that you get a chance to get a picture of it, and then you can have it to use those questions to prompt discussion with your family or with your city group. And so here's the first question. What are you most thankful for right now? What are you most thankful for right now? So when you get that opportunity to ask that question, stop and think about in the moment. Again, that's helping us cultivate the attitude of gratitude. I know that sounds cheesy, but the attitude that we need to have, what are you most thankful for right now? Help us posture our mind and our heart around thankfulness. Secondly, what is one adjustment that you could or should make to your current routine? So we're moving into this. It's going to keep going a little longer here. So think about your routine. Talk about it with your kids involved. What's one thing we need to add or change or tweak? What's one adjustment that you need to make to your current COVID-19 routine? Okay, so think about that. That's a great thing to kick around. Third question, what is one new way of blessing or encouraging someone that you could do this week that you haven't done yet? And there's lots of good examples of this. You know, we had some people uh, drop by our house, uh, staying in their car, the little curbside visit, the drive-by blessing. Maybe that's something that you haven't done yet, done yet that you could do. Maybe it's a handwritten note that you could drop in the mail to someone. Uh, maybe there's a special delivery or a video or audio message you could record and send to someone. Hopefully we're still keeping up with our Code 4 culture, our Code 4 check-in, so keep doing that. But, but think through, what's one new way? Keep being creative in how you bless and encourage others. So what's one new way that you could be a blessing or encouragement to someone this week between now and next Wednesday? I'd love to hear about that. Fourth question, what character quality or attitude do you need to focus on this week? This is where we get to the nitty gritty as we move into this thing and we're tested and we're tempted to grumble or to you know, grow weary in this season that we're in. Pick a character quality or attitude that you know you need to focus on. Maybe it's patience, maybe it's perseverance, maybe it's thankfulness, maybe it's hope, maybe it's joy. I mean, whatever that is, what character quality or attitude do you want or need to focus on this week? Talk about that with your family, with your group. That'd be a good question. And lastly, what are some fun ideas you could employ that could make this time even more memorable and impactful in a positive or helpful way. 
What are some fun ideas that you could do? Talk about that as a family. Talk about that with your city group. We're going to put the slide up that has those five questions on it, and you can snap a picture of that. I just want to say thank you again for hanging in with us. Thanks for tuning in. We're working out the technical glitches and things here, but uh, so glad that you've joined us, Grace City. Uh, I want to say a blessing uh, to you. And again, jump in off after this. Hopefully you jump right into conversation or more prayer with your family or with your city group. Jump on Zoom or house party and connect that way or sometime this week. And then remember to join us, make plans, spread the word. Sunday morning, 10 a.m., another message from Pastor Josh. You won't want to miss it. This is a great a great way for us to be connecting in these days, one service all together, Sunday, 10 a.m. And, uh, and then I'll be back here next Wednesday uh, during this coronavirus season, and we'll connect. So thanks for tuning in tonight. God bless you. The questions are going to come up. Remember, small business owners, jump on that Zoom call, 4 o'clock tomorrow. Email us quick, and uh, hello at gracecitychurch.com. Thanks for joining in, y'all. Have a great night. God bless. We'll see you next time.